Hi there, so this is an extra video for my overall thoughts on season one of she and the Princess of the Power, consisting of 13 episodes from The Sword Part 1 to The Battle of Bright Moon. And overall, I found the season to be very good and very well made and enjoyable. Um, taking the first season on its own, I felt overall it's a very good start to the show. Um, but when it compares to the other seasons, I have no idea. Um, perhaps later on, by the time I'm completely done with the show, I'll be making a final video comparing all five seasons of the show. And so what I feel is this season's greatest strength is the story. Um, very engaging, and it really has a ton, a, a lot of uh, mysteries and plots to really get yourself invested in. From the plot of Adora and Catra, the Rebellion, the Princess Alliance, Glimmer and Bo, the enemies um, of the Rebellion such as the Horde, the Horde's generals and major players such as Hordak, Shadow Weaver, Scorpia. Overall, there's just tons to really get excited and invested in the show if you're willing to get yourself invested into it. Um, I feel that the first seven episodes, um, from The Sword Part 1 to In the Shadows of Mysticore, they are fine um, standalone episodes with some um, overarching character development, but when we get to episode 8, Princess Prom, all the way to the end of the season, that I feel is where the season really picks up and just keeps on rolling with very minimal um, bumps in the road. Because that is where the most, yeah, that is where we get a whole lot of serialization, stuff carrying from episode to episode, consequences from one episode mattering in future ones. Overall, I just really give full marks uh, to the story and pacing of the show. Now, when it comes to the characters, again, I don't feel that any are outright bad. Overall, I overall on some level, I like them, but there are some that I liked more than others. Uh, my three primaries are Glimmer, and Trapta, and Catra, because of all the character development that they had. In the case of Glimmer, she started out as this young, irresponsible, spoiled princess who thinks she is ready for command and responsibility, but is not. But as it progresses, she goes on adventures with Adora and Bo. She goes through the ordeal of losing her powers, mending ties with her mother, taking up her father's weapon, and really becoming a leader in the final episode. Um, she just really went through a lot, and I am hoping to see more of that as we continue through the show. In the case of Entrapta, she just hit the ground running with, from the start with her personality, her characteristics, her look, and her abilities. It was all good, and yet to see her defect to the Horde because of a seeming misunderstanding was rather heartbreaking. Especially considering the fact that it doesn't seem she cares about this war. She's more into unraveling the mysteries of Etheria and the first ones. I think maybe that's I think maybe that's why I like her the most, because she out of all the characters, with the exception of Adora, Entrapta is the one most invested in finding out all these mysteries. In essence, um, I kind of see my excitement in knowing about the history and world of this show in through Entrapta. She just wants to know more. So anytime that she would be on screen, I would just light up. I just really like her character. And then we got Catra. Um, to paraphrase Zangief from the Disney movie Wreck-It Ralph, uh, Catra may be a bad guy, but the show did not seem to make her a bad guy because she had a lot of redeeming qualities. She went through her development and struggles uh, without Adora, and yet by the end of it she seemed to be pushed towards full villainy, becoming second in command of the Horde, 
really starting to hate Adora, becoming much more ruthless and resentful. I'm just really wondering what's going to be happening to her um, by the time we get to the end of the show, especially considering that this Catradora ship is still in full swing. I have done my best to keep myself away from spoilers, but I have heard of some stuff and seen some fan work, and I got a feeling that something will happen between the two uh, by the end of the show. <clears throat> now, characters that I cared the least about. Uh, well, among the best friend squad, uh, between Adora, Glimmer, and Bo, uh, I don't really care too much about Bo. I mean, I feel at the very least he is a competent fighter, and he is a very knowledgeable technician, and he is clearly the heart of the three of the best friend squad. Um, but I just cared about him the least when it came about the three primary heroes. And then um, there is Seahawk. Uh, again, Seahawk at times borders on being a little bit insufferable, um, but he is still at heart a good person. He's just rather arrogant, full of himself, and clearly can't back that up. I'm just really wondering when we're going to get his moment where he will be less like um, the character of Sokka from Avatar The Last Airbender when he started out. Uh, those who watch that show will know what I mean. Um, I'm wondering when Seahawk will get his one episode and one shot where he will just become so much more competent and a more well-rounded character rather than being just a one-trick pony and joke. And let's see, ah yeah, so when it came to the princess characters of the show, uh, while I like Entrapta the most, the one I didn't re I wasn't really fond of was probably Perfuma. That's mostly stemming from the fact that, like, I mean, she she has a good heart. Uh, she is very kind, very peaceful. She has a good design, but it's just her seeming attitude as rather naive, too passive to a fault, and the fact that uh, in her episode when she needed to be prompted in order to do something rather than just staying passive and being um, too idealistic, um, it just felt that she uh, was the least useful among the princess characters. Um, but I hope my mind will be changed later on, uh, because again, she is not a bad character. Really none of the characters I've seen so far are bad. I just feel that they could be better, especially when there are some characters that overshadow uh, other characters by a long shot. Uh, anyway, yeah. So, let's see, yeah. Um, animation, I feel is fine. I can't really comment on that because I'm not really an animation savant. I can't really um, go into the intricacies of what makes good and bad animation beyond it um, being just good. And in the case of the show, I feel the animation style is pretty good. I love how all the characters are pretty unique and distinct. Uh, they all are, are all of different shapes and sizes. Now, uh, when it comes to my the episodes, I feel that the ones I like the most are Episode 2, which is the sword part 2, Episode 6, System Failure, Episode 8, Princess Prom, Episode 11, Promise, and Episode 12, Light Hope. Um, because these ones had the, I feel these ones had like the best story, um, the best characterization, and all of them, they gave a, tons of advancement for the overall uh, plot and characters of the show. While um, episodes 3 and 7, which is Raz and In the Shadows of Mysticor, respectively, um, they were overshadowed because while they did provide some good material, later episodes just did what those two did even better. So I just feel like, um, yeah, they're not bad episodes, but there are just much better ones later on. So that's my final thoughts on season one. Sorry this went on a little bit too long and I had a lot to say, but overall I really liked it. 
What this will mean for the rest of the show, we'll see. Um, maybe compared to seasons 2, 3, 4, and 5, season 1 might not be as good, but I'll see. So that's it for now, so I'll be seeing you guys next time for season 2 of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. See you around!